Hey guys, it's the start of Giyu's. Now Giyu's part uh, only has so far, so far, remember that, so far, has 15 chapters. So a little bit more than Sanami's. And did you guys know how hard it was to find this gift? Because apparently all the gifts make are season one and that's it. And I want a newer one because damn, sorry, I prefer season fours. But, uh... I just couldn't resist using this one. He's just so sweet. So cute, right? Even though he's a kid, but who cares? He's like, I don't know. But anyways, this story is made by the same person who made him, Sanami, Rengoku's, and Tengen stories. This one is another yokai. So sorry if you don't want to be a yokai. Too bad. You're dealing with it. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoy. Carrying a basket on his back, Giyu scaled up the wooden steps that led up to the forest shrine. He grudgingly softly as he limped slightly with every step he took. His aching ribs and back were killing him. Regardless of the pain, the water Hashira continued his ascent until he reached the wooden red Tori gate, then stopped at it. Why did he come here? You ask. Well, it was because he's here to see the very woman who'd bestowed his heart. Yen. And she was a kitsune. In folklore, the kitsune was considered a mischievous trickster with the ability to shapeshift. Often an anaki slash yokai that was said to be accomplished with an iri onki or fox deity whom people worshipped for fertility, rice, tea, etc. Giyu had no idea what he got himself into when he first encountered Yu on a warm, faithful summer day in the forest. At first sight, the water hasher mistook Yu for a demon that had been terrorizing the village and attempted to kill Yu. Yu had to convince him that you were not a demon. Regardless of your ears and tail, Yu told him that you were indeed human but considered a spirit of the kitsune inside you, making you a kitsune tashuzi, and that you would never ever harm a soul unless threatened or provoked. Despite the miscommunication, Giyu, still probably, should have killed you, but there was something about you that enthralled him, though he had actually never seen a live yokai before, since they were said to be fairy tales. But if demons could exist, then why not yokai? Soon, Giyu found himself being entranced by you. He couldn't help bring himself to harm you, so insisted to let you live. To which, in return, helped him back down and track down the real demon that had been attacking the village and means to wound. Over time, the two of you grew closer and his relationship with you grew stronger until eventually, you both confessed your feelings and fell in love with one another. Intently, Giyu saw himself as a lone wolf and had no intent in any romantic relationship since they had been la had lasted thing on his mind. He just assumed he had no time for intimacy or romance. But you, the very being that made his heart throb, who laughed at every joke he had, had shown him nothing but pure love and compassion. Love him. After two and a half years of courtship, Giyu had unthinkable and did well propose to you, which you'd literally thrown yourself and said, yes. It most certainly threw him off guard when he wasn't expecting you to do so, regardless of what your life with him would be, plain internally thought like him. It was almost enough to put a full, genuine smile on his face. Almost. Moreover, Giyu didn't want anyone to offer of his affair, oh no, of his affair with you, for he feared that the other Hashira would come and hurt you if that Ubudurashiki would ban him from the Demon Slayer in course. Though there wasn't anything in the rule book about falling in love with the yokai. He wouldn't risk losing you, though, if the considers were dire, especially if it involved a certain insect or windhashira. 
Passing through the wooden torii gate, Giyu spotted a small shrine straight ahead. Several feet away from it was a mica house, where Yu currently lived. Giyu's stoic blue eyes then glanced up at the big and blooming cherry tree that stood by at the small shrine. The very tree bears his and your et- eternal oh, initials that you both craved into its bark a mark that will forever symbolize his and your love. After stopping briefly at the shrine to offer a prayer and depositing some yen in a small stone bowl held by a miniature statue of Inri, Oiki, Giyu soon made his way towards your home. He stepped onto the egwa, now standing in front of the soji, and calmly gave it a soft knock. Momentarily, Giyu heard faint footsteps approaching as the door slid open to reveal you. Tokida, you said, excitedly upon seeing your lover before pouncing him. The already injured male didn't even have time to react as soon as he found himself losing his footing and falling backwards with you, releasing an oof. The waving basket he'd been carrying leaned only inches away from him. Its contains now laid on the ground. Ow. He nonchalantly groans. Inwardly, this would be the second time he had, um, <clears throat> fallen for you. I'm so happy to see you. I missed you. You say happily. You stop embracing him and glance towards the basket he'd been carrying. Your eye-colored eyes wind in delight as a happy grin crosses your lips that flashes your canine-like fangs. You brought me peaches. Tokido watches as a white-colored fox ears and red tips of the top of your hair-colored head twitch and your matching nine tails fanned behind you excitedly. Indeed, you were a breathtaking sight to behold. Quite literally in this case. Yes, I I picked them for you as a gift, he said, trying his best to show his discomfort. Upon completing his mission of slaying yet another demon, Giyu wanted to bring you a gift, but since he didn't have enough money, since he already spent it on buying food for himself, (laughs) to get you something luxury like jewelry, he remembered just how much you loved fruit, especially peaches. Sorry if you hate peaches, just pretend. So he went to find you the ripest and juiciest peaches he could find. However, upon climbing up the highest peach tree, a branch snapped, causing him to tumble down to the ground while hitting every branch and twig on the way down. Still, it seemed to be have worth it, because seeing you with the sheer joy on your face made him happy despite his injury. Aw, Kiyu, thank you! You smiled warmly before leaning down to kiss him while nuzzling his forehead with yours. I love you! I would say the same if it wasn't if I wasn't in so much pain right now, he said, his tone and expression stoic as always. Your ears perked up at the word pain as you quickly got off him before gently helping him up. What's wrong, Giyu? Are you okay? you asked, your excitement now replaced with worry as you watched him stumble a bit. I'll tell you once inside. It's nothing serious, though, so don't worry, he reassures. Wordly, you help him step up onto the egwa and into your home.